from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to NextConf, hashtag NextConf. This is the Tanix big customer event. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. And this is our wrap, day one wrap, Stu. We had the practitioner day today. Interesting setup for Nutanix. They have the keynotes at the end of day one, which is kind of interesting. Most companies you know, have it at the yeah. beginning of the day. And, and Dave, part of that was just logistically, yeah. uh, this convention center, while it's kind of massive, there was another show wrapping up, so they had to shuffle things around, and the advice I had given them was, well, who do we put on? Well, put on some of the partners that we ordered announcements, and Customers, give us baby. users. I mean, Dave, more users, more users, more users, they delivered. So, yeah, absolutely, and I want to talk about that. Uh, well, let's go get right into it. I mean, every customer we talked to today had similar themes, right? Simplifying, getting rid of the non-differentiated heavy lifting, reducing the IT labor pain, uh, and all of them that we talked to were using Acropolis yeah. uh, selectively. Yeah. They, loved, they all loved VMware, but they were using Acropolis to you know, make sure that there was a level playing field with regard to not only the right workloads, but also just sending a message to VMware that, hey, we have options. Yeah, Dave, the thing I loved about the customers, uh, I think about the Scholastic interview we did. We went 10 minutes into the interview before we talked to the head of infrastructure about his infrastructure. We were talking about digital transformation, how they're helping children read, and it's underneath that invisible infrastructure happens to be from Nutanix is helping him to do that. Same thing uh, talked about uh, with PXP, said it, it's not, oh, you know, I could, my infrastructure's a little better, it's how do I allow my IT staff to do what he called the fun stuff? And that meant, you know, I'm working on the analytics, I'm you know, digging into Splunk and getting more you know, value out of my data. Uh, that digital transformation is something that the customers here are embracing. Uh, the hybrid multi-cloud, maybe not as much yet, so Nutanix is a little bit of ahead of their customers there, but right, so some real good you know, customers that are embracing change and building that platform for the future and Nutanix is a you know, The partner. question I always have, because I always talk about, oh, everybody's doing the digital disruption, they got to get rid of the, the banal infrastructure tasks, shift that to our digital transformation and, and analytics initiatives, data initiatives. Sounds good, but that's not easy. And the gentleman from PXP sort of underscored that. It took some time, we had to do some training. People process technology, <laughs> it's the people and process stuff that is hard. So that's some, something that's very interesting, I think, to me, Stu, is this shift that's going on. We talk about it in true private cloud. $150 billion going out of heavy lifting, going into uh, 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 vendor R&D. True private cloud and public cloud. Right. And true private cloud is the fastest growing sector. So if you look at infrastructure as a service, uh, a software as a service, and true private cloud, those are the explosive growth areas. Virtually everything else in the enterprise is in flat or declining mode. Yeah, a a absolutely, Dave. And uh, you know, got to talk to a number of partners that are helping you know Nutanix expand uh, where they're going. Uh, we're going to hear you know Google's going to be in the keynote. Diane Green, one we're looking forward to. The announcement today. Uh, Wall Street gave Nutanix a little bit of a bump and gives them some added credibility into uh, really you know why, why Nutanix should be considered a cloud partner. And actually, uh, it was uh, Scholastic said uh, that he really saw Google as thought leadership uh, in you know, containers and Kubernetes and something they're starting to look at and therefore gives him more reason that when he deploys it, uh, he's going to turn to Nutanix to help him uh, look at it, uh, you know, talk to Intel, talk to IBM, uh, so some companies expanding what kind of applications are living uh, on, uh, on Nutanix and uh, you know, some good thought leaders talking about, right, how IT can continue to be a sustained differentiation in the marketplace, something that I know is near and dear to your heart. So Julia from Gartner was, was very guarded in her, her comments, yeah. I thought, very excellent comments, but when we tried to sort of push her into the you know, horses on the track conversation, she kind of stayed neutral. Okay, that's cool. But we like to riff <laughs> independent thoughts on theCUBE. So Nutanix, for a couple years now, has been sort of pivoting away from so-called hyper-converged infrastructure as everybody else moves to hyper-converged infrastructure, and they're pivoting to cloud. And the obvious next wave is that what Furrier calls inter-clouding. 
you know, the man, that con, extending that control plane across multiple physical entities, whether it's public cloud, private cloud, on-prem, off-prem, legacy, et cetera, managing that. Um, there's a lot of companies that are, that are trying to do that. Do you, in your opinion, is that something that Nutanix should be doing, could be doing, will be doing? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, so Nutanix, if they built up the stack, uh, we've said before, I think we said on the intro, Dave, Nutanix is looking to be like the next VMware. What does VMware need to do? VMware needs to know how they fit into that world that you just laid there. That's why, you know, Pat Gelsinger made bold move, going to partner with Amazon. Nutanix has a little bit of relationship with both AWS and Azure. Uh, looks like they're going to have a deeper relationship with Google uh, to really expand what they're doing. Uh, they've made a, a few acquisitions uh, in the market. It was uh, Calm.io was one that they acquired right before VMworld last year, and, and that is some of their really management layer, that control plane as to how they're going to look at managing in that multi-cloud world now. Does a customer turn to Nutanix? Do they turn to you know, some of the stalwarts in the you know, IT management space? Do they turn to the public clouds? Uh, Nutanix needs to prove this out, expand their roadmap, uh, and you know, you get more customers excited. Uh, there's, I believe, you know, we've said sometimes, it's a smaller show, it's about 4,500 people. It's what they're, they're, they're expecting here at the show. It's a good size uh, for you know, a company that just went public, uh, you know, not yet at a billion dollars, and uh, you know, impressive, always good enthusiasm at when we come to this show. Uh, and uh, you know, expecting lots, uh, you know, high bar for what they should be delivering in the keynotes. All right, so good first day. Uh, we're going to come on, coming at you tomorrow. We'll kick off with an assessment of the keynotes. Uh, and then tomorrow's a lot of Nutanix content. It's going to be great. We've got their executives on, some of their partners. We're going to have Diraj, who's always a great guest. Very thoughtful. A uh, Couple uh, more customers too. Yeah, and, so. and more customers. So keep right there. Uh, if you want us to ask questions of some of these guests, uh, you can tweet us. He's at Stu, I'm at D Vellante. Uh, check out siliconangle.com for all the news from this and other shows. Check out wikibon.com for all the research. Okay, that's it, we're out, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching everybody.